Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars Colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we're going to bring our crew back home and then we are going to cycle this out using the ion engines. Uh, someone asked whether I would be using the methane oxygen engines on the tugs to boost this up around Earth orbit. That's not necessary. And we're using the fuel from the uh, tugs, and I should actually detank that, uh, to simulate some extra mass, like payload mass, and see how well this does, how much delta V it takes to cycle it out. We'll be doing so in time warp, obviously. And uh, another question is whether the ion engines can handle the imbalance that will occur when we remove this pod over here. There is substantial mass over here because this is where we're keeping our food, water, and oxygen, and we've got the Quest airlock. So this is going to be somewhat imbalanced. We do have a mild reaction wheel up here, but it's not huge. You know, it's like a normal station reaction wheel like the ISS has. So the question is whether we can safely time warp with an imbalance like that. So we'll get to it. I've uh, removed a lot of the delta V here. I've uh, moved the methane and oxygen into the ship itself. And we will see whether the pod has enough to deorbit. We might have to redock it if it doesn't seem like it. So uh, the crew, let's make sure they are in. I didn't move them out, I don't think. Yeah, Jeb, Bob, Valentina. That's it, right? Oh, Bill. Oh, right, Bill's not in. Uh-oh, Bill's in the airlock. See, we almost left Bill. And he would have gotten severely irradiated. Yes, so everybody's on board the Lynx. And we are going to undock. Well, yes, its liquid oxygen reserves would be low, should be low. We have 242 meters per second, which should be enough to deorbit from this altitude. This is not a mild mass, this is 10 tons right now. Mostly empty, though. We'll try and get back, uh, well, maybe we should dunk in the Pacific, because the South Atlantic is in darkness. So we'll hang out one orbit, and we'll retroburn over here-ish to get down in the Pacific, perhaps close to Hawaii. We will see. As we gradually depart our magnificent ship that hopefully will be very, very functional, right? I mean, looks good. Does it work? That's the question. Now, in the place of this pod, of course, we are going to put our Mars lander. That's that's the location where the Mars lander goes. And uh, so that's what we'll be taking. So we shouldn't be imbalanced on an actual Mars trip, but we want to see how well it deals with it anyway. Okay, retro. Among other things we'll need is, of course, a refueling resupply vessel for the ship. That vessel will have to be able to get to a high orbit from with the Sagitta Super Heavy. So it can't be too heavy. I don't think it'd be carrying a full xenon gas load, for instance. Not one of those full tanks. So we'll have to think about that. I might design a different sort of tank for the transfer vessel. Okay, that should do the trick. More than well enough. Uh, so far, by the way, only 1% stress for the crew, but I don't know how that equates uh, as far as a full Mars mission. Of course, we don't want them to get past 50%. They start going crazy. So the question is, did they? how much time did they actually spend up there? Uh, no, normal, please. If it's like 10 days, that means they can last only 500 days. That's not good enough. We'll do a more substantial test for their... whether the Mars Transfer Vehicle has enough habitability for them for the long term. But that's after we cycle it up to a higher orbit. Okay. And... Right. That's good enough. Dump. Dump. 
refill this liquid and oxygen tanks. Well, that's because it's got smaller tanks now. Well, we've tested this on um, moon return, so it had better be good enough for this. And I suppose we'll do the descent mode thing. Okay, where are we? We are currently here. Not really close to Hawaii. Uh, Sajita probe, that's probably our service module. And that's because, in case being a stellar, it is something weird with the megajoules and that. So it runs out of power pretty quickly. That's probably all right. We'll see how the lander stage does with that. If the lander stage has the same problem because it's basically the same thing, then that might be an issue. Well, it's recharged because of the solar panels, I guess. Eventually, long term, we can add other stuff to the Mars transfer vehicle, like a greenhouse, which uh, probably it won't supply all the food needs, but it might supply a small proportion of the food needs for a trip there and back and stuff like that, depending on whether we want to bite the mass requirements. But then again, we can add another fuel module. You know, we can expand depending on what we want to do with it. No, don't hold pitch. <laughs> it's still trying for some reason. We seem to be getting some deceleration. Approaching two Gs, not quite there yet. Still trying to do pitch for some reason. Let me see if I can turn off Smart ASS right now. Now that indicator, when it shows 4Gs, it's not really 4Gs. It's less than that. I know. So, we definitely did not exceed 4Gs there. Now I have to worry about the forward heat shield getting caught on that docking port. Ooh. Okay, well, gave me a mild heart attack anyway. <laughs> arm. Arm. And we're at 5.2 meters per second. Okay, and splash down and recover. Recover. Alright, back to the vessel and let's cycle it out to a higher orbit. Okay, so obviously without the links, we are lighter and have more delta V. But we are now going to turn prograde. Make sure we have dynamic persistent rotation. I'm going to tune down the attitude adjustment max stopping time. Let's get it back to 8 for this huge ship. Is it gonna stop rolling yet? <laughs> uh, it's still rolling. Okay, well, while we still have some daylight to work with, let's proceed. Thaws up, RCS off. Remember, we wanna see the balance. Now, this doesn't produce that much thrust, so hopefully the reaction will, will be good enough. And we want to turn off Smart ASS and go SAS. Okay, so let's see if I can hold prograde through time warp. I don't actually need to zoom out. What I need to do is go to map view. It'll be easier to appreciate how this ion engine stuff works from map view. So time warping, you can see we're still lifting up our orbit. And, but we need to time warp very quickly. Uh, hold on, let's center on Earth. That'll be better. Come on. Ah, there we go. Nope. Yeah, so it's holding prograde fine with just the reaction we all help. You can see how many days it takes. We're on day 10. And also check out the delta V. Good thing I'm recording this because I'll want the numbers later. Oh. Tug and adapters. I, I don't know what that is. That doesn't sound very important. Let's just make sure this isn't called tug and adapters. 
Um, so um, rename vessel Mars transfer vehicle. Yeah. No, I don't care about tugging adapters. Thank you. That's probably a spent stage. So you can see, even though we're only applying thrust on this periapsis side right now, we still get a little bit because it sort of starts. Well, there's an asteroid. It sort of starts applying thrust over here because it starts being able to see the sun over here, and that's why we get some periapsis rays. And it's sort of a radial thing. We could probably plan it a little bit better. We'll see. We've got a little bit of a wobble in the prograde vector up and down there, but it's not a big deal. Yep, we're waiting for 2,000 kilometers before we can time warp any faster than this, but it's pretty good. You can see it doesn't take too long as long as you can apply thrust during time warp. I wonder if I should risk one Kerbal on the first trip, but then they'll be all alone, and so their habitability will not be very good. It's tempting, though. As far as our time, we've got 319 days until the Mars transfer window. I should get the transfer window planner in here, though. It's probably not exactly that. Like a time warp faster on the apoapsis side, but it'll just take me out of it on the periapsis side, so we'll wait. As we get higher and higher, the nighttime side of the Earth is not going to block us from the sun as much, so it'll become rounder and rounder. Let me look up where the Van Allen belts end, and that's basically where we want to be. We can stop this burn once we get above that altitude. Well, Wikipedia says 58,000 kilometers. So this is going to end up being a sort of peculiar orbit. We, we know how much it takes to transfer to the moon. We know how much it takes to transfer, you know, get to low Earth orbit or stuff like that, or geosynchronous orbit. But what about this when we're at 58,000 kilometers, which is where we want to get back to once they come back as well. We don't want to stay in an elongated orbit or anything. So basically, right here, we should be safe from the Van Allen belts. So let's thrall down. And it's taken us, oh, 100 days. So four planning is necessary. But note that uh, most of the, of course, we've lightened the load. So now we're going to uh, get most of our Delta V in less time, which will be helpful. But probably for exiting let's let's do a mock exit into interplanetary space from this orbit and see how much it takes so let's say mars was in the right place and we did the burn in the right location in our orbit right around here-ish you can see this is not the most convenient place but it'll take about a thousand extra to just exit We've taken like 5,000 to get to this orbit though, because it's circular. And to actually get to Mars, it's crazy. Gotta figure out whether it's worthwhile or not, but I feel like we need another one of these tanks on here. We certainly need to top these off before we go anywhere else. Okay, but it can balance without having something on this side that's good i'll see what i want to send up next there's probably gonna be a few missions that need to come up here to deal with this this is not going to be our transfer we'll have to get transfer window plant well mechjeb can do it right now and, and not asap lowest delta v it says 2050. hmm well we'll have to see i mean obviously earth is not going to be here at that time i don't know how to read this. Uh, oh, we can read it. Oh, it's like here to there. So the node is in 246 days. We arrive in 544 days, 541 days. That's a 300 day transfer. That doesn't give, uh, it gives us less time when we get there. 296, I could just read it from here. 296 day transfer hmm I mean it's not impossible we, we gotta keep
keep them around for a while. And whatever lander we send to Mars surface, we don't have a base there yet. So they might as well stay with the ship where they have room. We'll think about this. This, this will be our initial plot. So we'll have that in there. And that's what we we'll plan for. Now, obviously, if we use the ion engines, we're not going to be able to do this burn precisely. And then again, in this really high orbit, we do have some time on our hands. This is an interesting way out. Anyway, uh, but yeah, we could probably do a burn a few hours long. We might be able to do it, I mean, really with a two-day or it won't be very accurate if we try and do part of the burn and then do part of the burn again on a subsequent pass. But we definitely have a few hours with which to do it. We'll see. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is try out a xenon gas replenishment solution. In other words, we've got a xenon gas tanker that we're going to try and send up to our Mars transfer vehicle and see if we can fill up half of one of the xenon tanks. So it would take uh, four of these to fill it up completely. I don't know if we have enough Delta V to get this all the way up there. And if not, we're going to, uh, well, we might have to go with a larger rocket. Well, this is obviously a Sagita Super Heavy. So we're going to have to have a Super Duper Heavy, which is six boosters. Though I didn't really design the pad with that in mind. <laughs> Uh, there's a custom pad specifically for the Sagita rocket, and yeah, it only has four slots for boosters. So, well, anyway, uh, up here we have one of the service modules that we had for the Lynx spacecraft, and then an adapter, and then the Xenon tank is exactly like the ones on the Mars transfer vehicle right now, but it's 80% scale. So instead of a 5 meter tank, it's a 4 meter tank and that actually yields a volume that's about 50%. So we're carrying half the xenon gas. So yeah, that's basically how it all shapes up. Let's get to work, throttle up, SAS is on, and I'll just pilot it manually because we've got a rendezvous to do. Ignition. And launch. Oh, it almost blew up the pad right there. Yep, like I said, it's an awkward orbit. I mean, it's not an orbit that I normally go into, so I'm not 100% sure exactly how much Delta V we need. You can see we have enough Delta V to transfer to the moon and everything, but this isn't that. Or I think technically maybe we'd have enough for geosynchronous orbit. Not 100% on that. So this might have to be redone with more boosters. We'll see. Another thing I want to do is send crew up. We should have uh, crew on there, see how they do for like 100 days, which is one tenth of the normal mission, see the stress, the resource consumption, see if the water recyclers are working, or whether we need to send up another water recycler, that sort of thing, um, CO2 scrubbers, all that business. We really didn't keep them up there for very long in low Earth orbit. Obviously we'll also check the radiation. But with the transfer in 246 days we need to get a good 100 day stint in before we send it out. Maybe longer. Okay, core ignition. Crawl down. And booster set. And throttle up. Very nice. Probably we'll be letting go of the fairings sooner rather than later. Okay, fairing set. Alright, thank goodness those separated cleanly. I don't remember using this particular payload fairing base before. So that's it. That's uh, Mars Mission Xenon Tank Small version adapted to our service module. I had to add batteries to service module otherwise uh, even though it's supposed to have power in it, uh, KSP Interstellar decided that it wouldn't have power in it. <laughs> so had to change that up a bit. 
Well, so far I'm not thrilled with our Delta B situation. We'll see, but it might be that we can't carry this much. I may need a hydrolock stage. And since we're already using, well, we've already used Blue Origins Blue Moon, maybe I should just make a stage out of uh, BE3U. Though I actually need to model a BE3U in that case. I don't think there is a good model of it yet. Then again, I don't know if our current Delta V reading takes into account the extendable nozzle or not. Okay, separation, ignition, nozzle extension. Eh, still a little bit rough. Okay, or it's going to be a bit lopsided here. And we'll take that. 313 by 157. Okay, um, well, I think good starting place might be right there. Let's see. It's sort of like a moon. Best case is a transfer of a mid-course adjustment. We only have a 0 0.32 degree difference. Yeah, but despite that, if you take a look at it, that's as good as it's going to get as far as a transfer. We need 2,698 meters per second to get there, and then our relative speed is 1,423. It was a nastier orbit than I thought. <laughs> We'd be better off just parking it at the moon at this rate. Yeah, well, we don't have that. We can send up another stage to help boost this up further. But on its own, it's not going to work out. Okay, well, I'm not sure I want to bother with trying to save the mission we just launched. And, you know, just sending up another transfer stage in order to deal with it. So, we're going to try the super heavy version. And not the super heavy. The super duper heavy version. Six boosters. And will this be enough? I don't know. It depends on how the thrust to weight ratio bit sta uh, shapes out. So maybe, maybe not. Our trajectory could be improved compared to what we did last time. So I'll see about that. All right, ignition. And launch. 30 engines at the start. The core is of course not lit. sure looks hefty. Even if we can get to the right orbit, we probably won't have enough left over to actually dock. So we'll see. I really want to be able to carry half a tank of xenon gas up there. It might be instead of using this service module, we end up using like one of the large tugs to do the trick. The large tugs are uh, a little bit more efficient than these service modules. Not their ISP, but their structural mass because of the spherical tanks versus these things. Uh, there are, these are sort of oblong tanks. Also, there's not a whole lot of structure on the tug. This is completely surrounded as a service module, but the tug is not like that. You'll probably need supplementary solar panels, of course. One other thing the tug would save is we've got this sort of adapter, and then there's another adapter on top here. You know, there's a whole bunch of structural parts that we won't need. We'll just need the fairing adapter, and then that's it. No, no, we don't even need the fairing adapter, because that's already at the top of the stage. You can see the fairing adapter there. So we just need the fairings. So some weight savings that we could have just with using the tugs instead. Okay, ignition.
booster set. Six boosters! All going off just fine. Throttle up. Okay, fairing separation. Still carrying a full tank of xenon gas there. Well, a full half tank, a full small tank. This is looking generally better. Let me not immediately light the engine. We might want to coast to Apoapsis and then do stuff. Okay, but separation. That's good. Enable crossfeed. Make sure we're not. Well, this should prevent us from doing any crossfeed from the service module. Okay, so we're coasting up for a few minutes. We're over here, so we can't make a transfer yet. Okay. Ignition. And seven. Alright, so this version gives us, looks like, 87 tons in orbit. And 4,420 meters per second. Can we transfer with that? Let's see. Well, this is going to be a tough sort of precision case, it looks like. Wow. We'll have, we'll have to work on that. Alright, 27.7 kilometers. It looks possible. So we'll go with it and see if it works. Uh, okay, let me just ignite. Otherwise, we're gonna lose the timing. We're already pretty bad on the timing. Whoop. Oh, I lost communication. Great. So I can't throttle up. We really need to throttle up. Oh boy. Okay, now I can throttle up. We're quite a bit late on this burn, though. Alright, well, let's see how close we get and how much we need to correct. Okay, we need to plot something over here to fix things more. Okay, 1.4 kilometers. We can take that even closer. All right, 20.8 meter per second mid-course adjustment. Oh, don't mess it up. We'll just let this spin around. I don't think its power consumption is that bad. Oh, I meant to move this up and move that tank down so it fit in there properly. Oh well. Okay, which should I trust? Mechjeb or what I see in the game? Uh, let me let me go with Mechjeb and then we'll correct. Either way, it's pretty close. We need some time to uh, Retro burn, we need like 20 minutes. So we might not actually find out exactly. Uh, let's start out at 12 minutes maybe. We're still more than a thousand kilometers away though. We'll see. First little bit happens in nine seconds, so that'll help. Well, let's bring us well, not further away. It was was bringing us closer briefly. Okay, is there is locked or no? Nope. Okay. So, uh oh. Oh no. Um. Can you decouple? Um. Will this actually accrue things, or...? ah, That's not nice. I 
I thought this had a decoupler on it. Dang part. <laughs> it's also supposed to be hollow. I made the part, so I can't blame anybody else. It's just supposed to be a simple utility part. Well, in principle, we could have gotten this here. I think I'm, I'm done trying to get Xenon fuel up, though. Maybe it's time to get crew up instead, because I, I've had enough disappointment at this. There's really no way of getting it off, is there? Uh, Kerbal could do it, but obviously we don't have any Kerbals here right now. Okay. Right. Well, back to Space Center. Okay, so we're gonna send crew up, and since we're using the same adapter here, and we have been using that same adapter, my best guess is that um, I just put it on the wrong node on that previous Xenon tank launch. So, yeah, but I think I'll just move to using the tugs instead of this service module to bring that Xenon tank over to our mission. Since I think there'll be less structural mass, we won't be using this part, we won't be using those bases, and the tug is overall less mass than, less dry mass than the service module. So, and I think, in fact, we won't need to put extra solar panels because it's got enough internal batteries to make the transfer, at least. It's, I think, got two weeks worth of internal battery. So we don't, probably don't need the extra solar panels. And um, yeah, so looking at this, well, I mean, I set this orbit to high enough for, you know, the real uh, inner and outer belts. But as far as Kerbalism is concerned, it set the inner and outer belts much smaller. I guess I didn't have to go this far out. And maybe, I mean, well, there's that thing. There is that. We'll see how that affects things. The magneto pause. Hmm, that might be trouble. I don't know how intense it is compared to the rest. But yeah, as far as these two are concerned, we could have uh, gotten much closer without having the worst of it. And of course, we do have shielding on the Mars transfer vehicle, so I don't know. We'll see. We're going to park these guys up there for an extended period of time and see how they do. And then we'll have to replenish supplies. You might have to add some extra stuff like uh, more lithium hydroxide containers and all. We will see what happens. And I'll have to jot down some numbers. I'll just do this manually, retracting the structure. And this is on a super heavy. I'm not taking any chances. Even so, we might have to refuel this in order to get them back. Because when you think about it, this actually has to dip down in the atmosphere again. It took... 2004, uh, sorry, 1,400 to circularize this orbit with the previous mission. And that means that it'd take 1,400 to bring it back into Earth's atmosphere, annoyingly enough. So, yeah. That means we have to reserve that much. I don't know if we can reserve that much without refueling there, but at least we do have methane and oxygen there to do the refueling. Okay, SAS on and ignition. Launch. Um, did we accidentally light the core already? Oh, we lit the core already. Sorry, hold on. Uh, oh well, this is gonna be friskier than normal. Because <laughs> um, I just added two extra boosters to uh, Sajita Heavy. Um, I wish I had action grouped the core engines, but alright, we'll do this the hard way. It's got to take me some time to get all the engines on. Activate. 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 And activate. Okay, the core is now back on again. separation. Off they go. And throttle up. 
And launch escape system separation. And... Well, we can do that just fine. Alright, separation. And ignition. And nozzle extension. And crossfeed is enabled. I think if I put another stage in there, then we see the actual Delta V for this stage. Good. I hope I got some MLI layers on here, but not too many MLI layers. We'll see. Oh, throttle up. Double check our uh, life support situation. Everything looks fine. Probably didn't need to pack the 14 days, but let's not change that. And shut down. Bit lopsided, but probably good enough. Okay, uh, let's turn off the radiation displays for now. Uh, well, we better get a move on if we want that one. Doesn't look too bad. All right, uh, node RCS and ignition. We'll obviously do a mid-course adjustment over here. That should be far enough away from Earth to for it not to be too bad. And it's only 0.3 degrees anyway. Okay, I think we'll have enough for the cir adjustment, circularization, rendezvous, and then the return. But it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Okay, we've got a nice separation with this mid-course adjustment of just. 16.4 meters per second. Let's head out there. Okay, we are going through the radiation belts. That that should happen, yes. We have half shielding on this. Oh, I went too far. Thinking too much about the radiation belts. So we'll need 1,424 to match velocities and we need 1,424 to dip back into the atmosphere on this side probably, or just about. We do end up with a bit of space junk here in a fairly permanent orbit, you know. Very long-term orbit here. So that's not nice. Okay. We can wait a bit. and It's a 20-minute total burn time, but we only need a tiny fraction of that. Okay, mission. Very, very high above the Earth. Um, exposed to moderate radiation. That seems to be the normal background radiation amount. Now, I'm going to be interested to see whether that goes down around Mars. I mean, it should be less around Mars than it is around Earth, but I'm not sure. Not necessarily half, because, you know, the sun isn't the only source of background radiation, but it should go down somewhat. I think we have more delta V than I was expecting from the look of it. I wasn't reading the delta V of this properly, maybe. Okay, our time to close approach is getting further and further off, so let's uh, shut that down for now. Close approach distance has held relatively steady, so that's good. Okay, yeah, we'll make it, and we have plenty of delta V. It wasn't reading the delta V properly before. We have plenty of delta V to handle the return back, so this is good. My little system with the super heavy in this, at least, will work out. I wish we could do it with just the Sajita heavy. That would be nice. Uh, I don't know if that'll have enough margins we're talking about. We could knock off 600 meters per second and still make it. Now, would the Sajita heavy? I, I don't think it's only a difference of 600 meters per second between the Sajita heavy and the super heavy. Maybe the Sajita heavy with some extra boosters, little ED4 boosters. 
Oh no, uh, this is a different shaped NASA docking system than that one. They're both called NASA docking system though, so maybe they'll be compatible. Okay, yeah, we connected, no problems. All right, don't know why it was giving me weird indications, but okie dokie. So they're on board. Uh, we should move them to a, the fully shielded area. So this crew module one would be good. Basically, crew module one would be their sleep module, by the way, because they'll be spending a lot of time in there. And then most of the recreation and sciencing and all that business will happen in the big inflatable instead. Some of the science might happen in this module of the airlock, I don't know. Anyway, those are the plans. Now let's get some numbers. First of all, we need the date. Because we sure can't use the mission clock necessarily. So, it is August 21st. And we'll even get the time. Uh, what it says is we've got food, two years, 235 days. Water, 297 days, but we've got two recyclers, so we'll keep an eye on that. Oxygen, two years, 253 days. We should be able to dump some nitrogen, but we better just keep on, uh, keep with it. It's pretty light anyway. And lithium hydroxide is a tough one. We will need more of that. And let's just verify uh, they're completely 0% on everything and it's saying 0.02 rads per hour. We'll see how that shapes up. Um, shielding, I don't know whether them being in a fully shielded module makes any difference or what. Uh, it's probably just averaged out across the vessel. Uh, living space is ideal, comfort is modest. We, let's see the, what the factor is for this living space. Does it say? No. But just for reference, let me just get comfort 60%. So that w if it turns out that they get overly stressed, we might need to increase the comfort by some amount. Okay. Well, everything should be operating. We still need to replenish some xenon gas, though. So for reference, I mean, we take about 4,200 to 4,300 to get up to this orbit by normal means. Cycling out with the ion engines, we took about 6,000 because of the weird way it does it. So yeah, I've made 5,500 to 6,000. So yeah, in that respect, the ion engines are inefficient, of course. Why would you want to be in this orbit necessarily in the first place when it still takes 2,000 to get out? Possibly it'd be better to stage everything around the moon, but then when we get back from from Mars, we're gonna end up like we're actually gonna cap we're got past close to the Earth capture and then have to boost up again, and hopefully with methane and oxygen at that point, because otherwise, once again, we'll we'll either have to get the crew off very quickly or you know before we fully boost up back up again or they're gonna get a whole lot of radiation so we'll have to figure out how we're gonna handle that all right i think i'll wrap it up for this episode i didn't get as much done as i wanted but next time we'll focus on uh first of all uh trying a different method to get the xenon up here and second of all seeing how much these guys and gals, well, guys and gal, consume in about 100 days and get the numbers and then probably get a resupply of food, water, and oxygen up. Maybe get them back down. That's basically the schedule uh, before we actually make the Mars transfer with it. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.